Okay, so today I'm gonna go hang out with my friend Keith Armstrong, who is undoubtedly the most knowledgeable audio engineer, mixer, producer that I personally know. Super talented dude and just a wealth of information. I, it's a ridiculous, this video is, is crazy. Keith actually worked with Chris Lord Algae for over 15 years. So as you can imagine, the dudes worked on some very big records. Just to name a few, Paramore, Green Day, Bon Jovi, Backstreet Boys, Vertical Horizon, Jewel, Sheryl Crow, AFI, My Chemical Romance, Jimmy Eat World, Sum 41, Nickelback, Jack's Mannequin, Shine Down, Deftones, Bullet for My Valentine, Under Oath, Caged Elephant, Breaking Benjamin, Chris Cornell, and a ton of others. It's literally over two decades of big, huge records, and they were very influential on me. Anyway, thank you, Keith, for having me out. It was great seeing you again, and so cool seeing how you have your home studio set up. It is just super duper epic. Now, quick shout out to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. As you guys know, Sweetwater, Number one online distributor for all things awesome home studio musician, songwriter stuff. Every time we go to one of these studios on Monday, by the way, if you're not subscribed every Monday, I do one of these videos and we just get all of the greatest ideas that we can steal from these cool people who are generous enough to let me come do these videos with them. If you guys are looking to get any new gear for your studio or your setup and you see something you like, check the description. I put links to gear in there. By using those links, it supports the channel. It's literally the easiest way to say, Hey Andrew, thank you for making this video. This helped me and I need to buy gear anyway. Click that link, buy some gear. Thank you Sweetwater for sponsoring the video. So I'm currently in Los Angeles right now shooting a bunch of different videos and working on a little project that maybe I'll talk about in the near future. But if you guys want to book a Zoom call with me, you can go to andrewmastersmusic.com as well as any of the services listed here. Again, that's andrewmastersmusic.com. Thank you guys for watching and let's go check out Keith's super epic home studio. Tell me about these. What This is all from different parts of your sort of career? These two were kind of like from one studio I worked at. This is the first thing I ever worked on. Wow. Yeah, it just kind of worked out. Wow. Uh, which nobody thought was gonna be a single, except for the runner. Oh, oh. Yeah, but then like the bulk of this came from working at Mix LA, barring this, that, and my diploma. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I missed the two weeks of American Idiot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine ended up doing that album. It was like, I, I worked there, but I didn't work there at the time. Right. So that was, uh, so my friend of mine's got the big American Idiot plaque. Dang, the Under Oath record. This yeah. is like my whole adolescence <laughs> here. That's so cool, man. Yeah, that was a funny one, because like no one understood anything that, that, that you, know, you can't really understand the lyrics much and yeah. all this and all their song titles are super long yeah but then but then they, they every song had a working title uh, which was also super long yeah so it's like hey can you call up for it's like i don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cool run there was a good time i think i got chris in his sweet spot yeah i started in 2001 like right after 9 11 like october 2001 until like 2000 and 14 or 15 or something like that. Yeah, that was a big transition for music. Mm -hmm. What was this room originally? It was a guest bedroom. Uh, we picked the house because we needed a guest bedroom big enough for all my shirt. Yeah. And um, this was just, just big enough for it to work out. You know, even the closet is where I keep all the guitar amps. All these are wired up and ready to go. So, no way. Yeah, so all the cabinets are out in the live room across the yard. And so the back of the amps, I'll pull up here. And Whoa. then all the speaker cabinets are here on this column. And almost everything runs at eight ohms. The base cabinet runs at four ohms. And a couple of the amps, like I'm not gonna mod this thing for to turn it into an eight ohm thing. This is the Dick Dale amp. This, the Fender made this for Dick Dale because he wanted uh, to run a bunch of extension cabs off his twin. So they just made this head for him. And it's all big. Um, it should be about the same size as the Bandmaster. But because it has a reverb tank in it, um, you need to keep the output transformer away from the spring tank just so it's usable. So it's all huge, but it's mostly empty space in there. <laughs> it's literally wow. just to keep crap out of the spring tank. And then Jabba the Hutt right in the middle. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> trainer, what's, I've never seen that trainer. Um, so that's a YBA-1. So it's a, I think it's a 78 or 77. It's essentially in the lawsuit era of gear. Oh. And so that was their ripping off of a plexi. 
Oh, so it's nice. essentially a small box plexi with a Hammond organ transformer in it. It's all over Rise Against Records and whatnot too. It's It sounds like a Marshall. It's a great slick solo-y kind of sound to it. It doesn't get hard ever. I have too many Marshall-esque sounding things. I mean, yeah, this I actually, this, this is not a Marshall. This is a Dexter, just like this. Um, Dexter is uh, built by the guy who builds amps for Green Day. Oh, really? Yeah. And so he built a, a clone of the Green Day Rob Carvalho's Dookie head. So this oh, is cool. a, this is a part for part clone of that. So it's not actually a Marshall at all. The Bogan was the, would you say orange kind of thing? Yeah, kind of like an orange sort of situation. I mean, it's kind of like an angry Vox, which to me is kind of orange. Oh, cool. Like a little bit. It was basically the first amp conversion thing I got. And I, I bought one for a friend of mine with this exact same thing. And I got jealous of how her amp ended up sounding, which is how half my gear comes to life. Yeah. is getting jealous yeah. of gear envy. So I, I bought this. Uh, from a dude who told me that Matt Del Vecchio did the conversion and this thing sounded great so I had him take a look at this and he turned it into a master volume amp and uh, this thing became infinitely more useful yeah I'm, I'm kind of a fan of those things because like I don't know you can spend like $400 on something and it's all like the real shit I mean look at this I mean this oh, will wow. kill you while you're using it yeah of course if you put your hand in there but this is like you know it's all old stuff all point to point turret boards in there with all the original stuff it's just it sounds every bit as good. It just doesn't have like a famous person using it, so sure. that you can you still get the tone. Yeah, I keep my little pedal supply, power supply over here, and when I'm grabbing guitar pedals, that usually comes out of here. Psh, guitar pedal psh, straight into that. Then I have like the you know rack guitar effects here, a pair of uh, PV valve verbs, which are um, essentially they're the effects section that you would have in a twin. So it's a tremolo oh, cool. and a reverb, and it's all tubed out, so you can drive it and you get them in stereo. It's a cool, it's a cool maneuver to have two tremolos running at different speeds. And I got these UE 400, 405s, and then their analog delay. This actually is, I got more recently, I and mean, it has a tube screamer in it. If you see one of these things with the overdrive right here, it has a proper era correct um, TS-808 in it. Pair of Space Echoes. Um, they're both 150s, so it's kind of like the designer imposters version of uh, 201. Yeah. But it's what it is. And they sound great. Cool. And they're like different than each other. So they all have front inputs and outputs, except for the SPX and this. The outputs are on the back. So that thus, this um, uh, artisanal patch bay yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. right there that has all of the stuff that uh, you can't reach from the front panel pulls them to the front you know if you want to run like the dookie head into the four, mesa 4x12 out in the live room and there you go this is where all the cabs are pre-miked up and ready to go and these are the the mb pluses that have the summing in them so oh, cool. all of the cabs go down to two yeah and this top one cascades down to the second one and then they all and then they have they they all have this aux here and they go up to this spring tank with, with the input mix on. So either of them just, they both go to both. And then the return of the spring goes to the top insert return, which, you know, cascades all the way down. So any of the uh, mic pre's from any of the cabinets can access the Sound Workshop spring in mono or stereo. Wow. And then you can just kind of put it all together. So like sometimes oh, if okay. it's a mono yeah, yeah, guitar yeah. sound, right? And let's say I'm just using the Jensen speaker from like the Fender thing. Let's say I'm using the Bandmaster. Uh -huh. to record something, but I want reverb on it after the fact. So if I wanted it before, I would use like the Valverbs, but it's all baked in there. But what if you want it to be a little bit more like a plate, then Off your signal send. will go yeah. to here. Yep. And then I want it to go to the right side because this is panned left. Yep. And you just go boop. And then now all of a sudden I have a wet dry. Yep. And I can pan them across or just decide later. Or if I want it in there, you just go, all right, now it's baked in. And it's that simple. So I have a vintage Fender 2x12 sitting vertically like this, but the, yep. but it's it's wired up as a dual 1x12, and the top has a Jensen C12N, oh, okay. which is like your fast kind of percussive Fender speaker 1x12. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then um, the other the the lower one is a Weber on Nico Silver Bell, which is a slower, warmer Vox speaker. And you blend them? Um, you can. You can do or you, you can do them separate. Yeah, yeah. or wow. when I'm using the JC120, just do stereo. I mean, like it makes it yeah. more stereo. It, it takes a little bit more balancing because like the response time between the two speakers are almost polar opposite. One of my favorite amp combos is probably the Bandmaster against the AC30. And it's the fact that they're so different and they act, it's just, it's one performance, but it feels wide and it's natural because it's not yeah. like plugins that are doing it. They're just inherently different amps, Yeah, but they, kind of play off each other in a really cool way. And then the two speakers kind of like, kind of enhance that. So this whole thing comes down to two 
outputs, which goes straight into this UA2192, which um, is basically built by the guy who uh, builds the Burl stuff the B80 and the B2. So before he started Burl, he built this thing for Universal Audio when they first came back out and made their net mastering converter. So uh -huh. it's transformer coupled. The clock is great. It's actually my master clock is coming from these. I have two of them. I mix through this one at 96K. Wow. And then I record through this one at 48K. When I'm recording and mixing on output, um, I'm, I'm running through the Alpha Link. Okay. So I'm just using it for its digitals. I'll use the 96 converters for effects sends and returns from the, all the outboard. Mm -hmm. And um, it's all being clocked currently from this 96K2192. So there's two Pro Tools rigs. Okay. Right? That's why there's two computers. This smaller one is basically my fancy cassette deck. It's for recording mixes. So when I'm mixing, it leaves Pro Tools as eight pairs. These are them. And then it goes to this goes down to the SSL Fusion. It leaves the SSL Fusion in its effects insert up to the focus right, then oh, back down to the Fusion again. Interesting. <laughs> right? For EQ. Okay. And then it goes to a, a distribution amp, then splits out, going back into the original session again, goes to the speakers, and then also goes to this second rig, which is recording Just all of that. Just the 2X. Yeah. Is which is recording all of that at 96K. And the master clock is this right here and their time code synced. So I can punch in on mixes, which is really oh, handy cool. when you're doing revisions. If I'm going yeah. through mix tweaks and it's like, oh, I only need to fix the bridge. Sweet, I can just punch the bridge and yeah. moving on. And these days I've actually discovered that actually putting plugins on this rig and printing through an aux is kind of the way because then all my plug master bus plugins are running at 96K, even if I'm at standard def in the master, uh, the uh, mix, major mix session. Yeah. And, and and then plus like, I'm freeing up all that horsepower yeah. by running it on the second computer. Yep. And then it went past that and I'm like, oh, well, maybe I'll put some hardware inserts on here. So then, all right, great. Now the very new is a hardware insert on that rig. Oh yeah. And the, the Better Maker bus compressor is on there now too. What a great name. In, yeah. Can you engage the better maker? You can, you can push the button. <laughs> but actually better, it's better still. You don't have to push the button because oh yeah, it's one of those plugin I, uh, guys. And so like I have a plugin here that actually controls it. So inside of the session file, I can actually control the piece of hardware, metering and everything. Cause then you can change the settings, do whatever you want. When you open the next session file, it goes to whatever that is. And then we come back to the, I can use it for tracking turn the knobs like a <laughs> like an engineer would <laughs> yeah yeah and then uh when i when i use it for mixing again boom it just goes right back instant recall uh, for the old school ssl style thing i just this is where it's at for me it's it's my cla heritage showing with that actually i got it from him <laughs> oh the blue 230 is the mastering version of the red three which chris is famous for um the only difference between the two is the shape of the meters the color and this one button for the meter but if you open up the inside of it the yeah. boards say red three slash blue 230. so back to this thing so my master clock is this which hits this top computer uh -huh. filters down to the first big ben which divides the clock down to 48 and then okay. the bottom one is uh distributing the clock to all the rest of this i got two master clocks neither one of them are acting as the master clock yeah <laughs> there's a distribution only um when i got the 2192 and then I, it was replacing an old uh, apogee psx 100 and i was like put it in there i was like this doesn't feel like an upgrade yeah what's going on here this is supposed to be better and then i was talking to some friends they're like are you running it off internal clock i'm like no i'm running it off the big Ben." they're like big Ben isn't that great anymore uh. I'm like, what are you talking about and i just went Boop, to internal and everything just went Doosh. <laughs> i wow. was like oh my god you know it's not like these are new these are yeah. like you know they've been out of production for over 10 years easily you're doing tracking and mixing in this room are you producing i will produce a project if i'm like kind of if i love it yeah or if i think i'll have fun doing it yeah which generally means all guitar stuff i wanted to be a luthier first oh cool yeah when i was in college i had no other game plan so i was just unde undeclared for a couple years and then a guidance counselor was like you need to make a major and i'm like i don't know what i'm gonna do he's like what do you want to do I'm like, little guitars and he's like well we don't have that he's, and he's like mm -hmm music recording i'm like oh, i'll try it and i was like yes nice <laughs> so a guidance counselor actually picked my career wow but i always have uh, there's a soft spot in my heart for guitar tone guitar pedals are particularly interesting in that the newer versions of certain things are can be more useful than the original stuff yeah like big muffs right yeah. like part of the tone of a big muff like a classic one is your output level yeah it'll change like a tone knob the clones of it are built more like modern pedals and they're like they don't do that yeah and that's great 
and that's totally wrong. Yeah. But it's great. Like a Maestro Fuzz Tone sucks with so many guitars, but it's exactly right with the right guitar. Yeah. It just doesn't work with other pedals very well because I mean, this I think this was the first guitar distortion box ever, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it runs off of a double A battery. <laughs> And it has, when you turn it on, clicks like a lamp. Yeah. And it has its own input cable. Okay. And cause it's like, well, you just plug this into your guitar. Yeah. And this replaces the output of your guitar. Yeah. Like, why would you need to go with any, it doesn't go on a board. There's no other pedals. What, yeah. are, what else are you gonna do? I mean, at the time, that's all there was. Yeah, this is a Digidesign D command. It's the first rev of it, so it's baby blue. I was told, I'm just going to qualify this, that the R&D on this thing is what uh, sank Digidesign. Oh, really? Yeah, because they put so much R&D into it that it just didn't make enough money and then they eventually had to sell to Avid. I don't know if it's true, Yeah, yeah. but I love this thing to death. I used to use a Control 24 and then when I upgraded, <laughs> when I upgraded to Pro Tools 2018 from Pro Tools 10, yeah. um, I lost my console. Yeah, I wanted to get something more modern so that it would be future proof. But the fact is, I mean, I, I you know, grew up on SSLs and you know, I mix with my hands. Yeah. I don't draw anything in. Yeah. I mean, a lot, I mean, that's my automation. It's all hand drawn yeah. stuff in there. And I need to be able to see what mode I'm in automation wise, because I'll have sure. multiple things yeah, yeah. in write, in different, in different write modes, and then be able to grab. And so I need to be able to have these automation lights and the buttons to control them right above it. I use them constantly. That's like my whole thing. But, plus um, like I'm burning through faders on this thing, kind of on the semi-regular. <laughs> And uh, it's really clutch to be able to change them yourself. And then you're running Pro Tools which version? Uh, 2018. I'm petrified to move on beyond that. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, like, I, at any next version, I could lose this console and I could lose my interfaces. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is running fine. I'm not running into any horsepower bumps. I right. mean, the advantage of having all the outboard is that I'm not taxing my computer particularly hard. Yeah. Well, you do have quite a bit of outboard here. This is, um, what, 20 years of. 20 of work 25 yeah wow that's, a, that's and this amazing. all started from when up before i was counting on plugins for much anything and it, you know it's it's not everything all the time and for you know more modern mixes i'll use i'll lean on less and less of this it's clutch being able to like you know for reverbs in particular just yeah. be able to outsource it having yeah. a real spring tank is nice these clark technic reverbs i you'll see i have one here and i have one here and there's a third one at my friend's house um that just, that's like my primary drum reverb. It's just really thick sounding. I want my drum reverb to fill space from where the drums hit downward. Yeah. Not like an airy thing yeah. up on top. I want it to like, I want, it, I want it to reverb the shell part. So like anytime that I'm sending something through a reverb, it's never one, it's always two. That's cool. And then instead of like tweaking the parameters of the two things, like I have a bright one and a dark one and hitting yeah. at the same time. And to change my reverb balance, you just change the balance between the two. Usually I'll have the bright one be the shorter one. Well, when I hit my spring tank, it goes to this area hall also. And this is like a more of like a brighter, faster reverb. The spring tank takes a second for it to belch out yeah. <laughs> its springiness. And it's inherently a little dark. This is a quarantine thing. I tried desperately to not do this. I mean, I'm not even really like naturally a synth guy. I've, like fought forever just to like try to get synth tones out of guitar stuff forever and ever and ever. And you know, it was more fun to creatively create synth tones from guitar stuff, but sometimes you just need, need to think. I mix trailer stuff for a company called Sense It. Uh -huh. And they, one day we're like, hey, we just want a, a token of appreciation for all your hard work. I'm gonna send you a little thing. I'm like, oh, cool. And then this box shows up from Perfect Circuit and uh -oh. it's an empty one of these. They knew me. Yeah. <laughs> and this was like the worst thing you could do to someone with my personality. And I just was like, okay, time to learn about this. And it was just like, filled this thing up two weeks. And then it was like, maybe like two months later, it was just like, and like all of this wow. business. And um, it's a lot of fun. And I guess if I'm gonna, it's, this is the closest thing I have to a hobby. Oh, but what is fun is uh, organizing this kind of workflow into the guitar pedal workflow. Yeah. I have a couple of modules here, which are uh, guitar to instrument level converters. Um, these two racks, when they're in their full splendor, are essentially just effect, like effects. This is actually a, a modular stereo effect unit. And so I can take this, pull it over there to run stereo guitar through, yep. or take it out to the live room, put some contact mics or stuff in there, whatever you like, and then just do modularness to it. You got the NS10s. Yes. And then what are these, Events, is that what it says? Yeah, yeah. Event Electronics 2020 BAS. Um, they are the first speakers that I ever bought. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I got them in 1996 or 97. Obviously I've had them forever, but I switched over to NS10s and that's my primary speaker. And then are you running a sub with them? Yeah, I've got the BU2. I mean, this is from working at MixLA. I mean, this is all we ever listened to over there. So it just kind of like got institutionalized into, sure. into that. Yeah, that's a Little Labs Monotour. And that's my, my, uh, my headphone setup. I run it to a pair of Sennheiser HD 600s with the Cardus cross cable in here. I had the headphones forever and then I wanted to upgrade my amp setup. And I was talking to uh, one of my, the mastering guys I work with, he's like, you need to get the Cardus cross cable. And... But the cool <laughs> thing about it is that in this case, this is a purpose built chain. Sure. Um, when I talked to Jonathan Little, he built that amp that headphone amp originally for a and mastering when he worked over there. Okay. And it was for HD 600s with the Cardus cross cable. So he built that amp with this setup in mind. So it's like a sort of like a, a thing. It's awesome. And it translates really, really well, especially with, you know, the NS10 rig. The mm -hmm. top end is definitely different. It's not like exactly the same, but like the low end is comparable or at least relatable. Mm -hmm. And when I'm going back, when I go back and forth, I'm not like having a no moment every like single jarring. time. And um, there are times where I've only had this and come back to the, um, with a brief amount of time of reacclimating, it's like, I don't know, it's about as close as I've ever gotten to being stoked about headphones. And when people ask me what to get for their, <laughs> for their apartment that they're gonna be in for the next 18 months, yeah. I'm like, don't get anything and <laughs> get this. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> this is gonna sound the same everywhere you go. Yeah. And it'll translate eventually when you get something good and you're in a good acoustic environment. And this is called the Little Labs what It's model? a mono tour. Mono tour. Yeah. It's All a right. pun. It's a, it's a pun. Do they still make? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, they still make it. Um, I got this one secondhand, it's like 500 bucks. Oh, and it, it's cool because it has two outputs on it. They're only related by volume, okay. but by putting another set of headphones, it doesn't drag down impedance or level. Sure. It doesn't chew up gain. They're actually twin. Nice. Twin stereo. And they even give you a uh, little eighth inches on there. And then you've got all your options for listening to one side, the other, some mono summing, all that good shit. Cool. So it's like kind of like a little baby center section just in the headphone amp. The console, well, in order to use the center section, you use its its analog bit, which is called the Xmon, okay. which is notoriously terrible <laughs> sounding. Okay. <laughs> and then a friend of mine turned me on to this Trinov deal and my phone is covering it. So all the glory of Trinov is not apparent. Um, but they make this thing called the Demon, uh, which is a replacement for the Xmon. Okay. So it ties directly to my console. So I can control as if it was the thing that was meant to do, but it's going to that instead. And this sounds two infinities time better than the other <laughs> one. <laughs> it's awesome. It does like your kind of sonar works deal. The mic it uses for calibration it looks like this kind of Neptune's crown thing. It's this 3D mic with these little capsules of different shits right, right and right. when you're calibrating the room it echo locates your speakers and will tell you that you suck yeah. <laughs> setting up your speakers yeah. and you're like no we're not going to do this keep tweaking keep tweaking keep tweaking until it's it feels like it's comfortable enough at, like that you've got your equilateral triangle correct and everything like that and then if you let it run at 100 percent, it made my speaker sound the same which was really messed up so you go back into the trend off control stuff you, you put on you know music that you know yeah and say okay that low end sounds good here cool all right, but the top end, you can kind of pat that down. You can kind of control each one of them and then, you know, say what percentages at what areas you want it to do so that the music sounds the way you want in your room. Sure, yeah. And man, it's good. I mean, it's such a huge deal. It's the least sexy place to spend money. Right. But I mean, it makes everything sound better. Yeah. Everything, every single thing, every choice you make is based on that. Three cool things from outboard, pedals, guitars, and we'll go to the line room. I'll say the Mixed 76s because people will ask what those are. How about that? Yeah, what are they? Okay, cool. So 1176 copies, big shocker. Um, there were nine of them made by my friend who was the head tech at Mix LA, which is Chris's place. Mm -hmm. um, that's serial numbers three and four. Originally, the plan was to um, have Vintage King distribute them, but the tech guy was just not ready to invest his whole life into making yeah. those. And then Chris's other former assistant may have his pair still, but I, that's for me, that's vocal and uh, vocal double and nice. they're great. And you never touch them. The booger, oh, see, I, this is only talking about one thing, but they're both 1176s, so it still counts. <laughs> the, quick, the booger. <laughs> um, so that's an 1176 also. It's built by the same dude, but it has like technically higher phi components in it. That's the one that I use for recording. Wow. And I had him put the slow attack mode in it that like a uh, 176s has and he put it on this dope Frankenstein switch. So wow. you throw that in there and you put like 
a person attacking another person and the fast <laughs> mode is a Porsche and the bottom one is a bicycle. And then I had my friend's daughter decorate it. Yeah, like she yeah, did yeah. all the things with a crayon. Yep. And all the different colors. And she's the one who called it the booger. Ah, and <laughs> that's great. So I love that. That's pretty dope. All right, I'm gonna go with the with the biscuit. There's a plug-in. Okay. Uh, UA made it. And the plug-in is not even close. <laughs> so you can't judge this. So it has that little bit of noise that the plug-in has on there, but you just like turn the filter down like boop and it's gone. Oh, this nice. thing is so excellent. It's a it's so what it is it's a it's a bit crusher. Okay. In stereo. And they use a 8-bit converter from back in the day. I don't know where they get it from. Somebody told me it was like a phone modem or something like that. Whoa. And literally, you turn the bits on and off by pushing the buttons. Wow. So you can, or flipping the phase of them. And it has a really a purpose-built filter for it. And you can do, you know, clock rate. And then it has a wave shaper. Uh, you can use it as a 8-bit as a delay. Um, or you can, you can use that as a harmonizer. And it has a step sequencer for the filter. So you can do the beep boo beep boo thing. The reason why I call it out is because you just use a little bit. It makes uh, whatever you're recording sound like it's been around a while. What's what's it called again? Uh, the Biscuit. The Biscuit. <laughs> By Oto Machines. The big three are the Tele, this guy, and my looking Les Paul. I'm the original owner of from 1995. It looks like holy hell, but it has like the Tom Holmes pickups in it and I gutted everything. The only thing that's original to this is like the switch and the wood. Aluminum, tailpiece, tusk saddles, tusk nut, locking tuners, um, RS guitar works on the inside. Um, and plus 1995, man, I'm telling you, these things are like, I don't, I'm not, it all just came together. This is a great sounding Les yeah. Paul. I actually had a chance to play 359 Les Pauls and a 60 and was able to put mine in there. And like, this was about as good as any Les Paul sound wise. So yeah. uh, visually, no. Yeah, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's great. The pickups had a lot to do with it. And I think like the wood of the guitars from this era are starting to come into their own. Those two are interesting. So this is a Bill Nash neck. So it's which where he was basically just using Warmoth parts and modifying it. So this is a, a, a Warmoth fat back modified by Nash with a swag fender logo on it. And then a Warmoth body, a one piece um, ash. And I had it painted just the smallest amount. So it's almost like a Mary Kay finish, yeah. but it's blonde. Um, the cool. Temple pickups, it sounds super, super good. And then this Strat is the accidental one. I built out of parts from trying to build the perfect Strat for me. Yeah. And every time I, I modify a Strat, there's parts left over. And inevitably there's enough to almost build another guitar. So you just yeah. spend the extra money building another guitar. This is like the first accidental Strat that came off of it. Bill Nash body, which I love that it's a, it's a hard tail and it looks like it had a Bigsby on it. Uh-huh. It never did. <laughs> it's just part of the relicking. Um, Mexican road worn neck, Ron Ellis pickups I just put in there. Um, it's, it's awesome. It sounds really, really good. And it's the one that everyone uses the most, I would say of all the strats. That's and awesome. so those three are probably like my, the, the, the go-tos. You made all these absorption panels on the left, right and top. Uh, they look homemade, but they are not. They are made by someone in someone else's home. Uh, they're LA sound panels. Oh, cool. Um, in Burbank. Some burlap. Yeah, I went with, so like I knew I was gonna be putting colored lights in here, so I intentionally went with light color absorbers so that they would actually sure. reflect the color of the room. Yeah. And they're, it's the place, man. I mean, they're not particularly expensive. There's no, getting custom colors is no price differential than just what's in stock because they're always running out of stuff yeah. anyway. So it's just, you know, whatever you want, just give them a couple days and they just slap these things together really quick and you just hang them pretty easily. And so like my original plan for the room was only to have these two, those two, and those two. And I thought that would be enough. And yeah. then, uh, you know, then I listened and more I was like, good Lord. So you have to get the, those curtains are the restoration hardware blackout curtains, which are nice. what was recommended. Those are like the hardcore non reflecty things. And then you just, I panicked and just like, no, oh, crap everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, and it, it just sort of fixed it. Having the couch was a big deal. Yeah. Um, having the big organ on the other side of the thing is a nice base trap. Nice. Um, and it sounds pretty good in here now. I mean, there's just corner traps that are a different color and that was left over from a different studio. But um, I'm and between that and the Trinov, I'm, 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 it translates really well, I think. So this is a purpose-built um, recording space. That guy is the guy who built it. He was the first president of the Recording Academy, the wow. father of Wendy Melvoin. He was in the Wrecking Crew, it's Mike Melvoin. And uh, he's the guy who built this room. 
That Just, is so cool. Yeah, that, that's him. He's not with us anymore, but I keep his picture in here staring at the, the, that was the studio B rig over here just yeah. glaring at whoever's working judging here. yeah uh, we do a lot of uh, a lot of writing sessions happen out here when I'm mixing this room just goes unused so I just rent it out oh cool and so it's just drop your laptop on there Apogee Quartet Avalon 737 you have access to all the mics piano drum kit uh, vibraphone I got gamelons set up on top of the uh Vibraphone right now. It's a it's a 1912 Bush and Lane. I didn't buy it. I got it. It's free. Um, it came from the the sister studio uh, of Pytown Sound. Um, it's a Blue Dream, and this was uh, belonged to and Andres Matson, and uh, he let it go to the studio, and then they needed more space, so they gave it to me. Um, tons of percussion. Um, I'm all into like weird percussion instruments. There's a full octave and a half of boom whackers. We got hand bells down there. There's at least, there's like a tongue drum in there somewhere. Um, typewriter as percussion. Everyone hits this thing because they think it's a computer, but it's not, so you can't treat it like that. There we go. And the, yeah. the bell is a C, <laughs> turns oh, out. Oh, that's great. Uh, we've got the rotary telephone as microphone. Oh, wow. That is a really cool one. So like actually when you flick the switch, um, there's actually two micro, the switch kicks it up to this one, which is a crystal mic. They actually replaced the earpiece with another microphone so you can actually get two different sounds out of it. That's cool. And it has a, a DI style output also if you want to feed it into a amp or something like that. Microphones live over here. I've got like the card catalog thing for all, oh, the, cool. all the different stuff. And these are the cabinets that I was talking about, the aforementioned guitar cabinets that sure, are yeah. up ready to go. Um, worth noting is that the 57s are all modified um, to have the transformers removed. The ones with the, with the um, stripes on them are transformerless it drops the output down like 15 db or something like that oh wow so you crank yeah so you don't have to pad it i mean those apis with regular 57s you have to pad the mic pre's down and that makes everything sound worse that's so, right that's right i mean if all that's making it too loud is a crappy transformer then get rid of it yeah the only thing that's a drag about that is that if you send fan and power to those it'll fry them and then the one by ten has a beta 57 Wow. Hey? The hypercardioid 57. So like the whole thing is like, I try to run one mic on a guitar cabinet if I can get away with it, just so yeah. there's no phase crap. Yeah. And um, the beta 57s are really cool because of the hypercardioidness. So you get extra proximity effect, yeah. which is great for guitar, you know, for vocals, but great for guitars so that you get yeah. like all that extra low end from being too close. For running stereo, that's the one by 12. So the top, that's the, the Jensen speaker on top and the, the Weber speaker on the bottom. I used to use these betas. It was awesome for stereo having hypercardioid, right? So there's less yeah. bleed between the two mics on that thing. And when I replaced them with those the tone quality jumped up but i lost some stereo oh okay and i wasn't used to the sound of leakage from one going into the other i'm like what's wrong i'm like oh yeah cardioid i'm all about having um everything fixed in place for this thing i don't like to mess with those sure like that's cool. those guitar cabinet they're on their own box so yeah. like all the tie lines come to that box over there wadded up in the corner yeah. but the guitar cabinets have their own right so like they're known that you know that's just no touchy. We have the garage mic'd up also. Yeah, there's a separate um, snake that jumps from in here into the garage. So I can bring that box over to here and then just go snake oh. into snake. Um, hot snake on snake action and <laughs> take us into, into the garage so I could get a, a separate drum sound. Or it's oh, actually, cool. it can be really cool too because if you're recording live stuff, yeah, um, I can put, I have long speaker cables so I can put like guitar amps in here and put a cab in there or two yeah. cabs. And um, so you get good isolation. Recently, there was this one session where we were doing live band tracking. It was all full COVID mode. So everyone had to be in a different room. Yeah. And for some of the songs, we wanted the drums in the garage. And for some of the songs, we wanted the drums in here. So there was a changeover where the guitar player and the drummer were switching rooms back and forth. Wow. And the uh, bass player was just sitting on the couch right there, just like chilling. <laughs> <laughs> the difference, that. I would say, between here and what of a lot of other studios is like kind of my approach is a little bit more about first order retrievability um where like everything has to be accessible right now yes and i'll sacrifice a little feng shui for the sure you know f i'll sacrifice that for that yeah i mean my family is all carpenters yeah and such and so like i i have like more of a workshop aesthetic yeah. rather than a studio vibe yeah you know, I just want to see the stuff so that I'm like, everything is more inspiring to me if it's in front of me and I can just grab it really quick yeah. and things need to be plugged in or nearly plugged in. Otherwise you might as well not even own it. Yeah. You know? 
So that's kind of like the overarching practicality of this. And then how it looks is just how it looks. <laughs> for it. It's like in the, the whole like, oh, can we try this? The answer is always gonna be yes. Yeah. You know, and, and, and quickly. Do you have a website? Uh, PyTownSound.com. PyTown Sound is the name of the studio. Pi P I E T O W N S O U N D dot yeah. com. Yeah. PyTownSound.com. Mm -hmm. Link in the description. Follow you on Instagram at Proper, uh, proper Keith. Keith. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, so I'll put those links down there and anything else that you have, I'll link that down. You guys can follow Keith. And uh, if you are in LA and looking to make a record or mix a record or whatever, I can reach out to you. I'm guessing you have an email on there or something. Yeah. I mean, kjamix at mac.com. So if you that can rewind that a few times and watch it, the, the <laughs> <laughs> I'll put all of the info down there. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank yeah. you so much for having me and uh for super geeking out this is gonna be really really cool for um uh, compared to some of the other videos where it's a little more just moving forward i love that you got into the weeds like that's gonna be oh yeah and this is like so so cool i'm, I'm frustrated this well, is why you know this is it's a struggle for me to get through sessions sometimes because people just want to talk about this crap yeah a lot and i, I can't talk about it with my family because yeah, they don't care all right dude thank you yeah. so much and uh, everyone give them a follow and we'll see you guys in the next video all right thanks guys Bye bye, bye. Woo.